Oh, hello. Sorry, I didn't see you there. I'm Jessie Crowley, the lead naturals educator at the Per Museum. Now, we're obviously not at the museum, but we're here in my office and I'm just working on my insect collection. Did you know all these insects can be found in our great state? I know it's hard to imagine, but there's actually a great diversity of organisms that live in your own backyard. Whether you live in an apartment or house, there's always something new to discover outside. So why don't you meet me out there and I'll show you how. It's really nice to get outside. So today I'm gonna to show you how you can study the bugs that you might find in your own backyard. Now, what is a bug? So bug is kind of another word for invertebrate. Invertebrates are living organisms without backbones, and that's gonna be the focus of our study today. So in order to do this, we're gonna construct what's called a pitfall trap. A pitfall trap is a device used to trap invertebrates that are active on the surface of the ground. Insects reaching the lip of the cup and fall in are unable to climb back out. Before we make our pitfall traps, make a hypothesis as to what kind of invertebrates you think will fall in. Get in there, you. You will need the following supplies. One plastic cup, preferably one with a dome-like lid like this, whatever tape you have on hand, and of course, a journal to record what you catch. All right, take your cup, put the lid on top, upside down. This will help prevent any critters from crawling out and take a long piece of tape to fasten the two together. It doesn't have to be fancy. It's gonna be in the ground anyway. Looking good. See, told you it was easy. Now let's go find a good spot for it. Uh, I kinda need that, thanks. Where should we put our trap? Hmm, you wanna put it by some vegetation. Perfect, how about by these Engelmann's daisies? You will wanna dig a hole deep enough so the top of the cup is flush with the ground. Make sure you fill in any spaces around the cup. Looking good. Almost forgot, you will wanna add some kind of bait to your cup. I chose banana because it's my favorite. You can experiment with different types of food in your house. Make sure you leave your trap out overnight. Many invertebrates are nocturnal or active during the night. Morning sunshine, let's grab the cup and see what we caught. On a table outside, lay down a white pillowcase. Don't use your mom's favorite linens. On top, lay a plastic container with pretty tall edges so critters can't escape. You might wanna have a few extra small containers on hand in case you wanna separate anything out. Carefully remove the tape and the lid. Carefully dump your cup inside the container and make observations about the organisms you caught. Wow, I can't believe we caught a snake. I'm gonna put it in a separate container and look at it later. Wow, look at the diversity. This is amazing. Let's take a closer look at each species. Look, a centipede and a millipede. Do you know the difference between the two? Centipedes' legs typically spread away from the body, like the one on the right, and they only have one pair of legs per segment. Millipedes' legs point more down towards the ground, and they have two legs per segment. Some millipedes, like the one we found in our trap, can fluoresce under black light. Pretty cool. Awesome, a mollusk, a decolate snail. It's Latin for beheaded. They are fearsome predators. They prey on other snails. Snails shred their food with a ribbon-like organ called a radula, which is covered in hundreds of small teeth. An earwig. Earwigs are insects. We know that because if you count the legs, they are six. Despite their name, they don't crawl and infest people's ears. There wouldn't be any food in there for them. They eat fresh and dead plant material and smaller insects. Check out those pinchers also called cerci. These are used to catch prey or to defend themselves. Ooh, another insect, a big headed ground beetle. Check out those mandibles or mouth parts. These guys are actually great to have around. They feed on a variety of garden pests like wireworms and caterpillars. Ah, uh, roly polies are always a fan favorite with their ability to roll up in a ball, just like an armadillo. Pill bugs are actually crustaceans. They're more related to shrimp and crayfish. Females carry eggs in a pouch called a marsupium. You can see from this picture that the eggs have hatched. The young will emerge in a few days. Check out those white gill-like structures. In order to breathe, pill bugs must remain moist. That's why you almost always find them under logs, under rocks, in really moist environments. I saved the best for last, our only vertebrate, a rough earth snake. Vertebrates are animals with backbones. These small snakes are mainly fossorial or live underground, most often found hiding beneath logs or leaf litter. They feed almost exclusively on earthworms. I found this snake shed earlier this year in my garden. Do you think it's the same snake? Hmm, I don't think so. 
snakes shed their skin to replace old, worn out skin. When you're done exploring, take your critters back to the site that you caught them from. Make sure you fill in that hole and then release your bugs. It's better to do it later in the day when it's not too hot. Hope you enjoyed our backyard bug exploration. Now it's your turn to uncover what kind of bugs live in your backyard. See you next time. so nice to get outside. Now I'm gonna show you a super, stop saying super. I mean, I'm not looking at the right spot. Someone needs to get a touch up.